the Joe Rogan experience. I know you're worried you're going to say some crazy shit and uh, <laughs> you're going to torpedo your life. Now that you're a cult guru with strawberry blonde hair. <laughs> it's more... Uh, strawberry blonde. Well, I did, it's a home job. It's, it's a beautiful. It's do-it-yourself. So it's more... Um, my therapist would always say, lean into discomfort, what you don't like. And I hate gingers. So I said, why don't I just become <laughs> one? I'm like... <laughs> your therapist says lean into discomfort? Yeah, if, if there's something that... Like, I'm in a men's group also, and they said, and I told them, I said, I'm going to go back on the Joe Rogan experience after four, five, six years. I don't know when the last time I was Probably here. Probably five, right? I don't know. It's been a while. And so they go, lean into the discomfort. Mm. Start with what you least want to share. Mm. And I go, this is me trying to. They don't know you that well. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking terrible advice for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I sit there. I'm driving over here, and I go, okay, start with what I least want to share. I pulled over on a, uh, Van Nuys Boulevard, and I puked. Really? I, yeah, I puked. I, wow. I'm, uh, I have a – I don't get nervous. I, you know, I used to have my own podcast. I've talked to you a million times. Um, and like, I just had, like, a visceral response, and I was like – and I just pulled over on Van Nuys. And I think someone took a picture of me. So we're out there. <laughs> and uh, I don't get nervous. Like these things, like I'm, I'm able to just uh, almost disassociate. It's like whatever. And just, go, right. and just go into any situation. And I just felt, you know, and I was like, oh, maybe it was the breakfast I had. I had a hard-boiled egg and uh, chia pudding. That's what I had for breakfast. So That's it? That's it. And <laughs> I pull over and I was like, Oh my God, I'm fucking nervous. I'm just going to puke. Just puke. I look across the street. There's a guy like, fuck. <laughs> and then I get in the car and I'm like, do I really want to share with Joe that I tried on like four different outfits uh, last night? Um, do I want to share with him that I got caught yesterday at, um, I was eating at, the, there's a place called Johnny Pastrami's in West Adams that just opened. It's an old restaurant that just reopened. And I know the, the guy that runs it, Danny. And he said, um, you know, there's an outdoor, I only eat in outdoor spots right now. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm so scared I'm going to be canceled if I talk to Joe. You're going to be uh, fine. We're going to maneuver I, and, our way through this. But then I go, I, I've been canceled so many times. Like, I kind of like it. It feels good. You <laughs> haven't been canceled since the age of real canceling, though. <laughs> the age of real canceling has been since you were on the podcast last. That's when canceling is kicked up to a new level because now – the pylons happen. Right. Before there was just canceling, like you would get in trouble for things. Someone would write an article. You'd be like, oh my God, what did David do? He's crazy. But now <clears throat> the pylon, the social media and the effectiveness of the pylon right. has been established. So now whenever someone, anything happens to someone, all the, 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 the pylon people. But, but I, like, I like getting canceled. Like do you? Lot. You enjoy it? Did you see the Michael Jordan documentary? I still haven't seen it. All right, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but it's... I heard it's awesome. It, the, the actual filmmaking is kind of amateurish, but the subject matter is so dynamic that, like, you're in it. And, like, the guy's a full-on gambling addict. Yeah. You know? and, and it's 12 episodes. It could have probably been, like, four. And the story's the same. It, it's just, this guy didn't give me the best seat on the airplane. This, this guy overlooked me in high school. It's, like, all these slights, and he takes it and he uses it as, as fuel. And so I sit here and I go, oh, I'm driving to Joe Rogan's right now. I'm scared to be canceled. And I sit here and I go, every fucking horrible thing that's happened in my life, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, verbal abuse, spiritual abuse, prison, getting my career taken away or this or, you know, anything has always led to bigger and better. So I'm like, kind of like it, you know, that's yeah. But that's just because you're a real person. Like you're not you're not full of shit in any way, shape, or form. You might be crazy, and, <laughs> but but you're a lovable crazy. And and when people know who you actually are, it's like you have these moments where things are uncomfortable, and you know, and you're confronted with, you know, bad a bad scene. But then you rise above. Thank you. I appreciate that. What is your uh, threshold with receiving compliments? Uh, my what's, threshold? Yeah, what's your comfort level? <sighs> I haven't I seen you in a long time. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. I don't know. Can, can I give you weird? Can I give you okay. five? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you, you're, you only look better as you get older. Oh, thank you. You have a beautifully shaped skull. <laughs> like, as an artist, as a sculptor. Like, I painted you. 
Yes. I don't like the painting anymore. I think I can do a better one now. It's but awesome. It's an awesome painting. I'm like, this guy, like all artists and sculptors out there listening, paint this guy's skull. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, you're unbelievably uh, curious, inspirational. You give me hope. You're funny. You're entertaining. And you're a leader. Just talk to all your guys right now. Like you're leading this charge to Texas right now. And uh, you're a perfectly imperfect, unrepeatable miracle of the universe. Wow. That's heavy. You're great, man. Well, that's very sweet of you. I yeah. appreciate you. Yeah. Thank I, you very much, man. That's very nice of you. Yeah. I, I, I love, you know, I haven't talked to you in it's been a, a long while. time, but I told you, I just, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people feel this way. You're just on all the time. <laughs> You're in on YouTube or on a podcast or on someone else's podcast. So I still, I'm like, fuck, I think about you. You're in my, you're in my head. Can I give you an uh, on-air gift? Sure. Um, I was, while I was trying on all my outfits last night, I, I was like, I want to see who Joe's talking to. So this mic smells like Post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, I was painting last night and I made you this shirt. Oh my goodness! Because you guys got on a little thing. I didn't listen to the whole episode yet because it's four hours. But um, you were talking about ghosts at the beach, <laughs> ghosts on the beach. So there's uh, ghosts on the beach right you there. You made this? Well, I didn't make uh, the. It's it's. Uh, you see the, the ghosts artwork. on. You see the ghosts on the front? Yes, it's <laughs> fucking awesome. You could wear it. You could give it away. Dude, just... <laughs> I'm gonna wear the shit out of this. Thank you very much. Man. Yeah. That, that's so cool. You're welcome. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Ghosts on the beach. <laughs> yeah, you never see ghosts on the beach. All the ghost stories are always at night. And... <laughs> it's true, right? Yeah. That was a good point. That I felt a... like I made a good point. That was a great point. Because, like, every... I mean, if ghosts were real, like, if they were really scary, you'd see them in cool times, like, at the pool. <laughs> you know? Doing back In Vegas, drinking, everybody's having fun. Fucking ghost shows up, freaks everybody out. Never. So um, I got all the embarrassing stuff out of the way, I think. Oh, no. So I was at this outdoor restaurant yes. eating at the corner and not having a full-on panic, panic attack, but I have a nice, beautiful, wonderful, quiet life now. I'm not on the air. I don't do podcasts. I don't do interviews. I'm not, I'm not like, my life is amazing. Like, I completely changed my life since the last time I saw you. And... I go, I, I do want to talk to Joe, but maybe, you know, maybe I'll just talk to you on the phone or go visit you in Texas. Like, I, do I need to go on the air? Well, I gave you that option. I was like, well, you don't have to do this. But Right, but I'm a sick person. But I'm you're a fun guy. You're so, fun. People enjoy listening to you. So I had this uh, sculpture that I made, and it was in my car, and I just brought it out, and I sat next to it, and I said, I'm just going to prepare a little bit. So I started preparing for the Joe Rogan experience, <laughs> and I started talking to this sculpture at the and i'm like looking i'm like you know it's three o'clock there was no one eating there and i got caught i got caught <laughs> like caught I, talking to a sculpture i got caught talking to sculpture i was talking to this thing i made and it wasn't a it wasn't a friend but it was a guy i knew and he's like dave and then he comes <laughs> over and i'm like oh fuck dude and he's like shame red face i'm like oh hey and he's like are you talking to a thing right now and i was like oh yeah i'm going on this thing tomorrow i just wanted to prepare a little bit i'm a little bit nervous i got my nerves i'm i'm because I talked to you, what, Thursday? No, yeah. I talked to you a few days ago. And we talked for a while, and I'm like, this guy is a professional talker. He's a commentator. He's a stand-up. He has this podcast that goes on for hours and hours, thousands of hours. It's an art. You're a painter. You're an MMA artist. In, in, in my world, I'm also an MMA artist, mixed media artist, right? That's... Uh, yeah. The bisexual of painting. It's like <laughs> you use everything, everything, right? anything goes. So I go, this guy is so fucking good at it. Cause I got off the phone with you and I'm like, he's so good at talking. <laughs> he's so good at talking. He's just, it's like, it's like when you practice something so much that you don't even know how, how, how good you are at it, you know? And, um, e even, even, even your podcast, they, they go on for a few hours, which is against every, everyone's like, oh, kids, they have no attention span this, these, these days. It's like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. It's fucking TikToks or Instagram. And here's this guy, he's talking to Post Malone for four hours <laughs> and, and, and making it seem just seamless and effortless. And that's because you're a master at it. And I go, I'm a, my confidence level as, as far as this art form is 
low. I don't talk to people anymore. I mean, I talk to my friends, but I don't talk as storytelling or entertainment. Um, my memory's shot to shit. I can't. Right. I watched three seasons of Ozark, and I can't even tell you anyone's name. <laughs> I go, there's Jason Bateman, and there's the kid, and the kid with the drone, and I, I don't know, the wife. I don't know anyone's names. I can't recall anything. Um, and, and you have all these scientists that are brilliant. You have comedians, and everyone's like quick-witted, and they're fast, and they're... And I go, I'm dim-witted. I'm like a, a human soft serve. I'm like... I, 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 you comparing I, yourself to the other people? You well, gotta, I, you gotta I, let that go right now. Well, you this, are who you are. The other am, people can't do what you do. <laughs> um, that's true. Yeah, your abstract way of thinking, like the way you are as a person, uh, you, you're so freely yourself. That's what allows you to create such amazing art. Like you just, you're free. Some people can't be themselves. They're not good at it. You're really good at being David Cho. Thank you. <laughs> you're really I, good I'm, at it. I'm horrible at taking compliments, by the way, oh, so thank well, you. It's uncomfortable for everybody, I think, unless you're a real creep. You did, you did it great right now. Just you're fucking there. awesome. Just hung in there. That was good. Could I, could I have done more? <laughs> could I have given you, like... No, we're good. We're good. You want to hear something funny? Okay. So the reason why I kind of did that was I wake up every morning racked with anxiety and nerves, and it starts immediately. You're a piece of shit. You're no good. People really? don't like you, this and that. And then, like, what did I say when you showed me my painting from 2018? I immediately have to self dep That's not that good. I could do a better one. So I, um, I talk to my therapist about it. I say, I, I don't have a self, I don't have a high self-opinion of myself. And they go, well, an average human living in society today, from morning till night, will say thousands of horrible things about themselves. Like thousands, like I'm not good enough, I'm fat, I'm ugly, this and that. Just And for you to say just a few nice things, I'm like, one of those is some fucking Stuart Smalley shit. Like, <laughs> and I'm good enough and I'm pretty. And they go, see, you did it again. You just went right into it. Like, wh why can't you say you're a good painter? You know you're a good painter. Why can't you say you're. And so they go, give me five right now. Five what? Say five fucking things about yourself that, that and I, I, I couldn't give them one. I couldn't give them one. And and they're like, don't you think that's awful? Has that always been the case? I think so. I think it's uh, to go into that kind of self-hatred is, I could sit here and say it's a um, Korean thing, K-Rage, but it's... K-Rage. <laughs> they said, <clears throat> you know, take a stick of deodorant, go home tonight, and write, I am enough on your on your mirror. So you see it every morning. And I go, I'm not doing that. That's so stupid. That's fucking <laughs> retarded. I'm not doing You're that. wasting deodorant. Yeah. And they go, We're at, you're paying us. You're here. Just do it. All right, fine. I'll do it. I go and I write, I am, I misspell it, E-N-U-F-F. -F. I am enough. And then I go next week and they go, so how's it going? You know, brushing your teeth, you look at, I'm enough. I go, I can't see it. They're like, what kind of deodorant did you use? You know, the clear invisible one. No, get the thick, white, chunky, whatever. Any purse, yeah, Old Spice, and and like a like you're a fucking graffiti artist, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, and I and I said I I can do it, but I don't believe it because I can sit here and tell you the amount of times in my life that I wasn't enough. Like I can sit here and go through many, many stories of women dumping me for richer, better looking, more famous, better this, better that. I can tell you of jobs I didn't get. So I, I'm not enough and I'm not, you know, so, and it's this struggle. It's this burning fucking, like the Michael Jordan shit. Like I got a fucking, I'm not, a, I'm not a, at war. I'm not, you can't fucking cancel me. I've already canceled myself. <laughs> How are you going to cancel someone who's already canceled? There's nothing you're going to say. There's nothing you're going to fucking do. That's going to outweigh anything I've already said to myself. You go, oh, that guy sucks, he's ugly, he's fat, he's full, full of shit. I've already said that, you know? So. Do you think that fuels your art? Do you think there's a benefit to absolutely, that sort of, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, it, there's, been that, there's been that debate forever. How do you create great art? And I'm not talking about good art, but like the transcendent art. The mm -hmm. art that like is, you remember it, you're, it'll live on for generations. And it's like, oh, it's like the Picasso and, and uh, Van Gogh and 
all the comedians that fucking hate their, it's, it wasn't a debate for me. When I look at the art that I enjoy, the comedy that I like, the music that I like, you must fucking suffer. You must suffer. You have to suffer. Uh, comfort is the, is the killer of creativity. That's what I used to say. And, you know, and I, you know, I'm saying it now, but like I'd be like in a room like ranting this. Comfort is the killer of creativity. You got to fucking. It's the killer of everything, man. But I'm rich as fuck. Yeah, I'm very comfortable. <laughs> but you're you're comfortable financially, but that's how you keep sharp. You keep sharp by not being comfortable in other ways. So I sit there and, I, and I'm going off on this rant. I'm like in a fucking echo chamber. They're like, "How long have you been telling this story for?" My whole life. I've believe it's not a debate for me. Right. For do do you know great artists that are comfortable and they're happy and they're like they have loving families and and there's uh, always something. There's always something. Right. I think you can have a balance, but you have to have this thing. Right. Whatever that thing is, there's got to be some sort of a struggle. And, and that was never a debate for me. I go, there has to be that struggle. And they go, but what if you take it away? Like, what if you chose happiness over great art? What if you chose? And they go, Dave, for someone who's rebelled and like made your own rules and done everything your own way, it's so weird that you just kind of accept this. They go, can, like what you just said, can great transcendent next level art be created without that thing? without that edge, without, with you pursuing joy and peace and love in your life. And I go, you know what? I've never tried it. I never tried it. Well, why haven't you tried it? <laughs> What'd you just say? <laughs> I don't know. F-E-P-S-H. <laughs> Fear, ego, pride, shame, humiliation. That's why you never tried it. <laughs> All right, fuck, you know? <laughs> And I go, you know what? I'll try it. And I'm, I'm, today I'm the happiest I've ever been. <laughs>